Hey, how's it going everyone? And in today's video, I just want to show you yet another video on how to deploy your uh, front-end application. And in this uh, time around, we're gonna be using Microsoft Azure. So as always, you will need an account and it's pretty much straightforward. I think uh, if you're looking to deploy your app, you probably already know how to create account for different services. Nothing sophisticated, straightforward. Just Google Microsoft Azure portal and go ahead through the sign up process. Uh, then you'll have an account, you'll have a GitHub profile, which they will ask you to set up uh, during the process as well. So, and then you will be on this page, probably for the resources in recent, you will have none. I have uh, quite a few actions here, but uh, that's irrelevant really. So what we're gonna need for today's video is we're gonna need an active subscription and we're gonna need a static web app. So uh, same as AWS, Microsoft is pretty much providing you with uh, somewhat similar services. And since uh, both compete against each other, they have similar kind of uh, pricing plans, similar services that they are offering. And uh, Microsoft Azure has a 12 month free um, a subscription plan for you to uh, poke around and kind of see uh, for yourself whether or not you like it. So I have my subscription there. If you don't have yours or whatever, then you just uh, simply in the search bar, search for the subscription, click on this one and then go through the process. But uh, I believe you should have like a, a free subscription plan um, active by default. If you don't, then it's straightforward. It will prompt you actually and will ask you to set up one. And then one so you're going to be going through the setup process there it's the same thing you just pick everything that's free all right so for the uh, app deployment itself we're going to need a static web app so again if you don't have it over here within the azure services you just um, click either this create resource and search it here or you uh, use this panel uh, search bar over here and go for um, static web apps and click it from here or as you saw there if you already have it here and you hover over this you can go directly to create an application from this home screen okay so it doesn't matter how you get there but um, if you go to the static app itself here's you're going to see the list of your applications i have none you either click create static web app here or click create there uh, then you can manage the view over there. So uh, you can play around with certain other settings. Now, uh, in my opinion, uh, Microsoft Azure has a little bit uh, better layout. It's a user-friendly as opposed to AWS. Uh, you know what, uh, AWS Amplify isn't complicated either, but AWS Elastic Beanstalk is definitely is, and certain settings are very hidden. And if you don't have PhD in rocket engineering and science, then most likely you won't find them. Uh, unlike Microsoft Azure, it's uh, really straightforward to work with this one. And it's, as I said, beginner friendly and just user friendly in the first place. Uh, with that said, it doesn't mean that Azure is lacking some resources or AWS lacking some resources. They both create services and which one to use, it's really your preference. All right, uh, we click on that create app, then we select the active subscription for me, it's this one uh, group. Well, as soon as we start pre-populating the app details or app name, it will um, it will pre-populate for us. Let's uh, do test uh, to do app. It is available. If we wouldn't, then it would prompt you here saying that pick another name. Uh, hosting plan, we're gonna pick free. Uh, there is only two free and standard. As soon as we create the app, I'll show you what the standard one is and there's gonna be a breakdown between the two. Uh, for region, we're gonna I'm gonna pick uh, West US 2. Deployment details, GitHub, Azure DevOps or other. I haven't really worked with other, others, so I don't know. Um, I would recommend GitHub since Microsoft owns GitHub they have uh, extremely seamless integration between the two. So uh, this is my account. Uh, if you have logged in accidentally with the wrong account, then this is where you would change it. But make sure before you do so, you go ahead and you click log out from your account, log into the right one, and then you change it over here because this prompt will already kind of pick up the current account in your browser. Then you click authorize and the account should show up over here. Organization, it's that account name. 
uh, repository, we are going to use uh, AWS hosting. So this is uh, obviously the app with no backend, as you can see down here. It's a static app, lives in the browser using local storage. So we don't have any API calls, no backend, no nothing. So um, that's why we're going to pick this, no backend branch. This is the list of your branches within that re repo. I have only these three, no backend. And that's it, review and create. Um, we hit create and that's it. That's our deployment process. So now if you don't have uh, any problems building the app, if you run like NPM run build and you don't have any errors, then most likely you won't have any errors during the deployment, uh, build and deployment process. Uh, the only thing may uh, come up that free plan has 250 megabyte application size limit. Um, a standard has 500 megs. So if you're running into that kind of problem, I mean, well, excuse me, 100, 220 megabytes for a static application, that a hell of an app. Uh, but another workaround, if that happens to be your case, then probably would be during the build, maybe uh, you need to delete a cache or something and, and trying to work around there. But I highly doubt like you're going to have 250 megabyte issue on static application, static website. Anyway, uh, so that is creating the app for us right now. There is a deployment details and so on and so forth. Uh, you can look at them over here. But if we go to the GitHub, two things has happened. Uh, if we select the right branch for us and uh, first of all, right repo, then we go to the uh, no backend branch that we selected. So first thing been this, uh, as soon as we click create button, this has created this file over here. It has committed also a change. And there you see that is the commit there, CI, add Azure, static web apps workflow. Um, and this workflow, um, this uh, directory here has a YAML file, which is a configuration file for our deployment to Azure. We're going to pull it locally and I'll show you that file inside of the VS Code in a second here. And the second thing that happened, if you go to the settings and secret and variables actions, then you will see this um, token over here. This token is also referenced inside of the, that YAML file that we're going to look at just in a sec. Um, just um, for those of you who may need this for whatever reason, but this is where it is. Okay. Uh, also, during the build process, if you go to the right uh, repo, right branch, and uh, go to actions, this is where you would see your workflow going, right? So um, I have some workflow from yesterday, uh, but if I click on this one, it should have uh, just, just this one that we have created two minutes ago, as you can see. And you click on that, and this is where you would look for your console logs during the development. If you have any problems, if you have any errors, mistakes, or whatnot, this is where you would look for those um, errors to appear. These are just warnings, some package using like outdated node version, and so on and so forth. Um, but that's pretty much it. This is your uh, deployment process. Uh, as you can see, deployment complete. Visit your site at this URL. This is one uh, one way of finding the URL, but I'll show you in uh, Azure portal uh, where you can see uh, where you can find that. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it regarding the GitHub. Nothing else to show over here. This is your deployment process. Uh, let's do a git fetch so that we can pull all the changes uh, and that commit that was created for us by Microsoft Azure. Uh, so we have that commit now and we do git pull origin, no backend, uh, backend. All right, so that is going to pull this .github workflows Azure file. This is a YAML configuration file for our deployment process to Azure. So. Um, in case you need to modify it, in case you need to add something, you have like, again, a specific use case, this is where you would do so. And um, this is the uh, token that I showed you inside of GitHub. So it's sort of authentication token between GitHub and Azure portal. Um, that's where it is being referenced. 
and if you need to modify again anything like app location api location and so on and so forth output location this is where you would do so uh, for your azure uh, portal all right um again pretty straightforward not not really um something that you need to modify um, unless again you have a specific use case uh like if you need to add an additional branch for your pull request so that with that being said that if you have a dev branch now if you create a pull request on the dev branch it will also trigger um your uh, deployment process your ci cd pipeline all right uh let me just close that and let's go back to azure portal so we go home we create uh, we click on the static web apps we should see our app that we have created over here so you click on this one you collapse it and uh, this is where your app is and if we look at um, this one in the middle here uh, this is the status of the application it's ready production environment and domain is your um, basically the website address for your application and it's been uh, created for you in case you want some custom domain uh, you can add a custom domain down here and this is what i meant by azure is a little bit user friendly because it has like you know these kind of things hey prepare for production do this do that add a custom domain upgrade hosting plan uh, by the way these are the hosting plans here that i promised to show you uh, so it's the free one that we selected. You can see all this stuff uh, listed over here. Hit pause if you need to read through these. Uh, I believe these are just self-explanatory if you give it a read. Nothing really uh, much to discuss here. Anyway, uh, let's hit that. Let's go back to overview and let's um, open up our application on this address. And what we're supposed to see is our best to-do app, you know, and if we start entering something, it will appear in our list. So as I said, there's no backend, there's no database. This is purely local um, storage app and it works. It's on the internet. It's also over the secure connection here. SSL is being provided for you. Um, all right, and I guess that's pretty much it uh, for this video. Uh, I guess, um, as I mentioned, um, Everything is nicely laid out here. There's no hidden settings, no caveats that you need to know about because everything is just right here in the left-hand menu. Anything you need, you just try to reference this one here and you will probably find your answers. Like if you need to add environment variables, well, that's where you add them, right? You click on this and give it a name, hit apply, and that's it. Now you apply those environment variables. Oh, and I forgot to show you one thing, uh, kind of to prove the concept here. Let's go ahead and um, commit some changes and let's see if uh, those changes will propagate to our website. All right, and for that, we're gonna go to our components main and we, as always, going to change the color of this button to yellow, hit save. And now we are just going to push to this no backend branch. And as you can see inside of this push branches, no backend, this will trigger our um, pipeline here. All right, so uh, push branch backend, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we added a change, let's create a commit real quick. PTN CLR change. Com Uh, okay, I have to stage them first and then commit. And then a git push origin, no backend. So that's been pushed. And since we, we have in this file on push, therefore now this has to pick up our push to the no backend branch and start the pipeline for us. Let's have a look. So we go back to our branch and we click actions and there we go. Our commit BTN CLR change is starting to build our application. And once that complete, it will uh, start deploying it. That's probably gonna take like a, a couple of minutes. So I'll catch you there uh, when this is finished. All right, as you can see, my process just finished and as you can see, like it took me two minutes uh, for the build and deploy. 
this is a small app, so that's expected. If you have a bigger app, that's probably going to take a little bit longer. So uh, the change may not necessarily propagate right away to um, through the CDN here. Um, let's oh, actually it is already. If you hit Control F5 or Control Shift R. Uh, to kind of clear the cache, then you will see this button has changed the color to yellow. If it's not changed, don't worry, it will be, uh, or try opening in uh, a private window, then you will see that change probably there. All right, uh, that's how you deploy the app to the Microsoft Azure. Hope um, uh, it helped you. Uh, and um, if you liked the video, just give it, a, uh, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.